In this video, I'll show you how you can generate a static site with 11T using Node.js, making use of the ability to access data from APIs and JSON files to construct your site with no needs for your own backend server. Hey guys and welcome to Azul Coding. If you're building a website for free and are using APIs and JSON data for blog posts for example, then you can use 11T to help generate your site, instead of having to copy and paste HTML pages for each blog post. As always, there'll be a link to all the code in the description down below. Let's take a brief look at what 11T is first. 11T uses Node.js, so you'll need to install that locally first, and install these dependencies in the package.json file using npm install in the console. If you're not familiar with how to set up 11T, I'd highly recommend checking out the link to the 11T Getting Started page in the description to find out more. The advantage of using a static site generator is that you can define templates in a folder called underscore includes. I've gone ahead and added in a base.njk file. This file uses the Nunjux templating language, but 11T supports many others like Liquid, Handlebars, Markdown and so on. As you can see, this is a basic HTML template with some styles below. When a page uses this template, any content on that page will replace this content tag here. Safe on the end means that any HTML reserved characters won't be escaped. Similarly, at the top of the file, we can define a title variable for each page and add it in right there. Let's take a look at the index.njk file. We have what's called the front matter up here, defined in our title variable, as well as the file name for the base template. And then below is our HTML content for the page. So when you go to index.html, once the site is running, you'll see the base template with this content and title added in. We're essentially going to be making a very simple blog with a grid of blog posts and individual pages for each post, all generated with 11T. And if you want to see how I went about setting up the HTML and CSS for this card on the right, check out the video link on your screen now. Let's explore how to add in some data from an API first. In the post.js file in the underscore data folder, I've started by retrieving the data from this URL so that we can use it in our template. First of all, you'll need to import in 11T cache assets, which can be the sole of Node. Then we return any data we want to module.exports like so. As you can see, I'm caching a data retrieve from this URL for one day, and that's really to prevent 11T from requesting that too many times as you're developing your code. It's entirely up to you if you want to cache your data, but do bear in mind that this is a static site, so you'll need to redeploy your site every time your data changes. However, this can be fairly easy to do with tools like Netlify. Before we continue, let's look at the data we're getting. The data is essentially a list of blog posts, each with an ID, title, and body. Let's look back at the index.njk file to see how we can create a card for each post. We simply need to wrap around this HTML code of a for loop that iterates through every post. As the post data is being retrieved from a file called post.js, the key to access that data will simply be post, like so. Then we can use the post variable to fill in the information about the post on the card, including the ID, title and the link to the post page, which we'll create later. And as you can see on the right, the page is updated to display a grid of posts based on the data we retrieved. Let's see how we can use functions to manipulate the data. The text for the post one is quite long. Let's see if we can trim down any text that exceeds, say, 40 characters. In the 110.js file here, which essentially defines all the settings for the generator, we can add in a function, or filter as it's called, that will help us trim that text. We'll start by adding a Nunjux filter, seen as we're using Nunjux templates, calling it trim text, and taking in a text parameter like so. In the main body of the function, if the text is greater than or equal to 40 characters, we'll trim it, otherwise we'll just return the text as it is. Then to use this function, go back to the template and add in the function name using the pipe syntax like so. Essentially, the post.title will be the text parameter for our function. Let's rerun the site as we edited the lmt.js file. And there we are, the text has been trimmed. We'll add in the individual post page now with a file called post.njk, a similar sort of file to the one before, but we'll need to add in a pagination value in the front matter section, specifying the post collection, one post per page, and an alias for the individual post value. So if you imagine a for loop, we're essentially doing for post in post. We'll also define the link to the page like so, and fill in the post data in the content area. Let's test it out. 
As you can see, I'm able to access the post pages as expected. I've also got a comments collection here, essentially a duplicate of our post.js file, but instead of posts here, it's comments. If I follow the link, you can see it's a list of comments this time, each with a name and body, as well as a reference to the post ID that we'll be making use of later. Looking back at the template, we can add in a bullet point list to display all those comments like we did before. But as you can see, these are all the comments across all posts. So we'll need to filter them down with another function. In the lmt.js file, we'll add in another filter with a comments and post ID parameter, filtering the list of comments to only those matching the specified post ID. Back to the template, what's the syntax for two parameters? We do the same as before, but add any additional parameters in brackets afterwards like so. We run in the site again. And it works. Let's finish off by using static JSON data instead of retrieving JSON from an API endpoint. I've included a very simple JSON file called excluded in the underscore data folder. And this is simply just a list of post IDs that we want to exclude from the grid of posts on the main page. To be able to do this similar to before, we create a new function, taking in the list of posts and the list of excluded post IDs and filtering them again to remove all excluded posts. In the index.njk file, we'll add on that filter to the post collection here, as we did previously. Let's rerun the code again. And as you can see, posts 2, 4 and 6 have been removed. If you're looking for an example app, I've created a suite of Windows and Android apps that are all open source. I've also made a language learning site which is 100% free and is built with 11T. Check them both out in the description down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest from Zool Coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.